I often say hybrids are the best possible solution right now between ICE, that is petrol and diesel vehicles and EVs. Hybrids offer you best of both the worlds and also don't come with any range anxiety which we see in the case of the EVs. And going further, very soon, a lot of states in India will be offering incentives on purchasing a hybrid. For example, UP does it. In Uttar Pradesh, you buy a hybrid and there is no charges in terms of the RTO. Imagine saving 2.5 to 3 lakh rupees on a high cross or an Invicto. That is the case going forward with other states as well. Hybrids are the in thing right now and a lot of you out there have questions around these vehicles. How different are they as compared to a petrol or diesel vehicle? Well, let me start the video and I'll explain you. I'll answer you all your questions. Now, a quick look at these strong hybrids in the market right now. Unfortunately, nothing under 15 lakh rupees extra daily. The most affordable options are from Toyota and Maruti. We have the High Rider, we have the Gan Vitara in terms of the strong hybrid options. In fact, a few weeks back, Maruti also launched the strong hybrid Gan Vitara in a lower spec version, thereby lowering the entry level pricing for a strong hybrid in terms of the options in the market. In the bigger scene, we also have the Invicto and the High Cross, but over that, I'll not be speaking about the premium offerings right now. Under 10 lakh rupees, nothing as of now, but Maruti is very keen on launching a strong hybrid in a small car. It could be the Swift or the Baleno or the Fronx. Just imagine getting 30 km peel from a small hatchback with a strong hybrid in proper real-world driving conditions with the AC running. No need for a CNG, right? Well, for now, let's get inside the High Cross and I'll try to answer all your questions around a hybrid. Now, hybrids only come with an automatic gearbox. There is no option for a manual. Uh, this is the eCVT that Toyota is known for. And like a normal automatic, you have the modes of parking, reverse, neutral and drive. In drive mode, he can even go to the sport mode by flicking the gear lever on the right side. You can take control over the steps. It's a CVT, so no gears as such, but steps by going up or down you also have the liberty of using power shifters right over here so yeah if you have been driving an automatic no change in that regard on the gearbox now let's understand the basis of a hybrid right over here you have a petrol engine and you have electric motor these can run independently or together to uh, power the high cross or the hybrid in the equation the ev mode well electric motor is over there and there has to be a battery to run the electric motor that battery in this case is a 1.7 kilowatt hour battery pack so two power sources, the engine and the electric motor. Usually when you get going, uh, there is ample juice in the battery and the EV mode will take over if the conditions are favorable. Favorable conditions are ample battery for the electric motor, the speeds are less and you are not very heavy on the right pedal. So in that mode, when you get going in traffic conditions or from a standstill, EV mode takes over and the car runs like an electric car. But when the battery comes down or the speeds go higher or you are hard on the right pedal, that is where the engine wakes up and it's not too very loud. The engine will wake up, it will power the car and it will also charge the batteries. So the battery of the electric motor can be charged by the engine as well as by region what is region when you're slowing down for a corner or traffic or a red light your batteries will also get charged up thereby ensuring that when you get going again your ev mode will kick in now for city usage we have a lot of stops and brakes and that is where a hybrid can do wonders i've been getting 16 to 18 km peel in the high cross regularly inside daily ncr with the ac running and that's bonkers for a large three row mpv out on highway speeds yes the speeds are very very high but then again there is a magic uh, there will be no pure EV mode at very high speeds, but the electric motor can definitely assist the engine, thereby reducing the load of the engine itself. For example, at 100 kmph, you can see in the display, both the engine is running and the electric motor is also assisting the engine, thereby reducing the load and it can get over 16 kmph at a cruising speed of 100 kmph, which is again very good for a large vehicle. At slower speeds of 60, 70, 80, yes, the pure EV mode will definitely kick in. Now, the kicking of the engine or the EV mode is very seamless. It's very smooth. In most conditions, you will not even come to know of it as a co-passenger or as people at the back. If the AC is running at fan number uh, two speed, you will not even hear the engine running. However, this is a eCVT setup. You go pedal to metal, the engine gets loud, but the high cross can be a super quick, very quick people mover. How does 0 to 100 in 10 seconds sound like? Well, that's really very quick for the segment. So yeah, you have the efficiency, you have the EV mode, you have the automatic transmission, and when you want the power, this car can be fun, it can be quick as well.
Now here is a quick savings calculator for you in terms of a petrol large MPV and a hybrid large MPV. If you stay in a city like Mumbai where fuel is over 100 rupees, you'll be paying approximately 9 rupees per kilometer for a large automatic petrol MPV. But for the high cross, it will be under 6 rupees. That's a difference of 3 rupees per kilometer. If your monthly running is a lot, for example, 2000 kilometers, in one year you can save 70,000 rupees. In three years, you can save over 2 lakh rupees. And then the plus point of the EV mode, the smoothness, and of course, always seeing good efficiency figures on the display. Now, when you're starting off, pure EV mode will take over in case there is ample battery in the system. Like right now, we have more than half a battery and this is the pure EV mode. This can also take place at higher speeds of 50, 60, 70 if the conditions are favorable. Uh, of course, I'm gentle on the right pedal right now, but if I want more acceleration, the engine will wake up and both the engine and battery usually will power the system like this of course if i lift off region happens and the batteries once again will start getting charged at higher speeds like 60 right now there is ample juice in the system and the pure ev mode can also kick in sometimes especially in the eco mode we are in the eco mode and right now i can be in the ev mode only even at 60 kmph or higher speed so all this happens very seamlessly and the benefits are multiple you have acceleration like this and you also have your fuel economy coming into the picture so brilliant setup as a driver you don't need to do anything you won't even come to know about the transition but this happens very very smoothly again 70 kmph in the pure EV mode and that brings us to the end of this video now definitely if your monthly running is over 2000 kilometers you should consider getting a hybrid the joy of driving in the ev mode the rush of torque and of course unbelievable fuel economy all these pointers come together to give you a good ownership experience as well any other question i have not answered for hybrid cars please ask me in the comment section below and we have a multiple people review of the high cross not one not two but seven of us giving you our opinion on the first row second row third row and the boot space is live on the channel the link to that video is currently in the description section below as well thank you for watching